So I just finished recording the Doggerland video, and if you will excuse me for this one, I'm going to turn the AC on because it's uh, it's kind of burning up in here. This is what I have to do, especially when I'm recording multiple videos in a day. I've got to like record a little bit and then uh, turn on the AC, let the room cool a little, and then go into the next one. I've got a little thermo thermostat therm thermometer right here. 77 isn't that bad. It's 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 a little it's a little bit warm. It'll get all the way up to 80, and I'm just like, ugh. I'm telling you, like, I wear these same shirts in every single one of these videos, and uh, they all stink. <laughs> like, I have to wear them multiple times before I wash them, or else I don't, I don't want the, you know, the, the pattern to fade or the image to fade. So I wear them over and over. What people don't know is that when I'm sitting here talking to you, I, I smell like a freaking rhino. That's the kind of behind-the-scenes action you signed up for when you joined uh, the subscribe to TMI, right? So Doggerland is, is interesting. Um, I don't know how many different how many different videos have I done on various places that are supposed to explain Atlantis or flood myths. I just find the flood myths interesting. I mean that's basically what Atlantis is. It's 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 a it's a flood myth. It's a it's a it's a place that was wiped out by a flood, in a cataclysmic event. Um, but they're so ubiquitous and they're so worldwide that it's just. It's always been really interesting to me, like how, how do so many different cultures have similar flood myths? And part of it, I think, is that it could just be sort of a trope, you know? Like it's, it's probably back then it was probably the biggest natural phenomena that was the most devastating. Um, you know, they probably had earthquakes back then and stuff, but they didn't have tall buildings. They probably lived in, you know, shacks and stuff like that. So it wasn't like civilizations weren't wiped out unless like it just literally fell into the sea but even then it's it's water <laughs> it's a water thing uh, it's people falling into the ocean so the bit in this video about uh, Lake Agassiz which was a giant lake of melt water in North America from the Laurentide ice sheet um, that uh, drained into the ocean and rose sea levels by like nine meters in a matter of weeks probably all around the world um, it's it's a, it's a fascinating thing to consider that, I mean, just like today, I'm sure there were a lot of settlements, like major settlements around the world that were along coastlines that probably got flooded. So that would explain why there's flood myths like everywhere all around the world. I, I just find that really interesting. And I found Doggerland to be an interesting story, just the idea that there's this area that's now under the water that um, it's not necessarily on a coastline. It's sort of in a continental shelf that's underneath the water. Um, that uh, you know there were there were people living there. It was hunting grounds. It was it was probably a whole civilization living this area. And now it's all completely underwater. I also feel like Doggerland, the story of Doggerland, what happened there is is I know I'm talking about climate change all the bloody time, and I know that um, probably people are getting sick of hearing it. But um, the thing that I like about using Doggerland is sort of a uh, analogy I guess for for um, for climate change stories for for you know climate change warnings is that um, it's a thing that actually happened you know we, we, we talk about like oh uh, you know all these things are gonna happen because of uh, warming and, and stuff like that and for a lot of people it's just like something they can't really even imagine happening um, it just sounds like alarmism you know like these aren't things that could actually happen but not only can they happen, they totally have happened <laughs> over the years um, in, in human prehistory. Entire civilizations were lost because something changed in the climate and we are nothing but bacteria on this planet that can be just, you know, wiped away just like that. Um, I think we simultaneously overstate and understate our importance because we're, we're also a bacteria that has the ability to dig into the earth and like pump a bunch of crap up into the sky and and make those make those weird changes happen that wipe ourselves out. But talking about Doggerland is talking about history. And it's not like climate alarmism. It's just talking about history. Things that did actually happen. Something I actually didn't um, didn't talk about was um, when I talked about the Lake Agassiz draining into the ocean. Um, something that that did was they think, if I, if I understand correctly, and I might be wrong here, but I, I think that they they considered that to be what caused the Younger Dryas, which was this rapid cooling period. 
Um, and it was because of something that I talked about before, which is the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Current, the AMOC, the, the Gulf Stream. Um, that whole thermal haline, thermal haline current around the North Atlantic, uh, that if all this like literally a, a black sea worth of fresh water just drained into the Atlantic Ocean, then you have cooler and less salty water flowing in there and disrupting that current. And um, so a lot of what they're kind of worrying about with what's happening on Greenland, all the, all the Greenland ice sheets melting, um, that it might disturb that AMOC again or weaken it, which could lead to something like the Younger Dryas to happen again, just like a rapid cooling period, which could cause ice sheets to form and stuff like that. Probably not quite like it happened in the day after tomorrow, but you get the idea. So this video also is one of those two-parters where I have a, a nebula video that corresponds with it. Um, it's, a, it's a bit of a stretch for this one. Um, it, it, it originally was going to be, um, so yeah, I, I feel like I just keep talking about it nonstop, but I took this great trip to Ireland earlier this year, really enjoyed it. Um, what the video was going to be originally was about Easter Rising, which was the Irish Revolution in 1922, I think is the right year. Um, and because I went to the uh, went to the jail, I think it was the Kilgannon Jail, Kil Kilgannon, yeah. And that's, it's it's jail spelled G A O L, so it's like gaul, but jail. It's like jail if Arnold Schwarzenegger was saying it. We we toured this jail, and that was where um, they uh, assassinated, where they uh, uh, not assassinated, executed all the all the people that were involved in the Easter Rising, or, or many of them. Um, and that's kind of what galvanized the Irish people to kind of, um, you know, take up arms and, and finally, finally get their independence. Um, so that was originally what the Forgotten Atrocities video was going to be. Um, but it, it also, like, it was less of an atrocity because it was only, like, you know, maybe a dozen or so people that they executed. That, you know, it was more of a, that was more of a call to arms kind of thing. But, um... I wound up going with the Irish Famine because that was like a, I mean, I just, the, the most recent one was on the Holodomor, Holodomor, yeah, in Ukraine, um, and it was the same kind of deal. It was, it was, it was exacerbated by a drought, uh, an Irish potato drought or blight, and, uh, but it was like the policies of the British that were ruling over Ireland at the time that exacerbated it and made it, uh, um, the famine that it was, and it's just like horrifying stories of, of people dying in the streets and, and that kind of thing. So, yeah, I was trying to find a video topic that would sort of kind of correspond with that part of the world anyway. <laughs> so I found Doggerland just because I thought it was a fascinating story, and uh, um, I try at the end to sort of tie it together with the Irish famine. I don't think I do a good job of it, but, uh, you know. It, it, it didn't connect quite as well as like the Ukraine and Holodomor videos and whatnot, um, but you know, I did my best. I do have a video in mind for this channel, uh, probably in early October, early to mid-October, that's going to be a little bit more extensive than a normal TMI video, where I talk about this, this shorts experiment that I've been doing on the main channel. Um, for those of you who've been following the main channel, you've been seeing a short every day, on the main channel that are just kind of like clips from older videos and um, I learned a lot doing this it's been enlightening um, I will say right away a little bit of a tease this experiment did not produce the kind of results that one would hope to receive <laughs> uh, but I also don't think I was quite doing shorts right anyway there's a lot to go into. I'm going to kind of like go through and, and discuss like what I got out of it, what I learned, um, and uh, what the results were. They haven't been good. <laughs> so anyway, I'll, uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. Maybe this was a little bit interesting, give you a little bit of background for what I was thinking with this video. I got to move on and shoot some other stuff. So there you go. Uh, hope you guys are doing well. Catch you next time. Bye.